Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're discussing some of the new discoveries in regards to black holes and black hole collisions. But actually, more specifically, we're discussing this study right here that makes a very interesting suggestion in regards to how black holes have a potential to increase their mass as the universe expands as well. In other words, black holes seem to be directly connected to the growth of the universe. So let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but let's start with the mystery behind black hole collisions. This right here, by the way, is the frequency produced by the gravitational waves when two black holes collide. So prior to 2015, a lot of theoretical scientists, a lot of theoretical physicists, made a prediction in regards to black holes and the black hole collisions. And the prediction was that basically we're going to be able to find them if we build a large enough detector that's able to detect very minute frequency changes in the space-time itself. And this is of course what we refer to as interferometer. And LIGO, as it's known, is the world's largest interferometer able to detect these changes in space-time. And that is essentially how we're able to detect these black hole collisions. But at the same time, other predictions involved the black holes themselves. For example, prior to 2015, the scientists also made an assumption about how many black hole collisions we'll be able to detect and what the total mass of each of the black holes is going to be. Generally speaking, in terms of mass, the black holes were expected to be way, way below the mass of about 40 masses of the Sun, with the frequency being maybe a few times per year. However, once the device became operational in 2015, and once these detections became a pretty regular occurrence, this is where a lot of mysteries sort of appear and became problematic for some of these previous theories. First of all, the amount of collisions was way, way more than originally predicted, with many of these collisions being found pretty much several times per month. But on top of this, the other major mystery started to appear in the last few years, the mystery of these extremely massive black holes. For some reason or another, a lot of the black holes detected so far had masses exceeding what was expected, with some black holes being almost 100 masses of the Sun. As a matter of fact, the formation of some of these black holes is currently unexplainable using modern physics. Moreover, some of them combined to create what's known as intermediate mass black hole, which essentially presented a lot of new mysteries and a lot of unanswered questions. And in the last few years, a lot of propositions and a lot of explanations have been made by scientists trying to explain some of these mysteries. For example, in terms of frequency of collisions, a few studies suggested that maybe what we're seeing is actually happening in the center of the galaxy. For example, in the center of the galaxy where there's a supermassive black hole, we also expect a lot of other material to orbit, and specifically a lot of other black holes. In our galaxy, we expect there to be at least 10,000 different black holes. And so the chance for collision in these particular regions increases quite dramatically. So one of the potential explanations was that, well, maybe we're just seeing these events as they happen around centers of different galaxies. In other words, we're not really seeing these two individual black holes in the middle of nowhere. Maybe these black holes are actually orbiting a much larger central black hole. And at the same time, this could maybe also explain why certain black holes are so much more massive. Maybe in the past, because of these constant collisions in these regions, some black holes just ended up being way, way more massive because of the constant collision with everything in the vicinity. And so this does kind of make sense. By being in the center of the galaxy, by having a lot of different black holes to collide with, we could potentially explain the mysteries that we're observing from LIGO. But not everyone agrees with this explanation, and a lot of other propositions have been made in the past. And one such proposition is from this recent paper, and it actually sort of, theoretically at least, makes a little bit more sense. And more importantly, this particular study is able to explain the unusual diversity of various collisions, specifically the diversity in terms of mass. For example, some of these black holes don't have much mass, but some of them have way too much mass. And more specifically, if you were to look at this in terms of the location where these signals came from, it sort of helps you uncover another unusual mystery. There's this really cool article that you can find in the description below, with this beautiful chart created by Nadia Bremer, that allows you to explore some of these detections by going back in time and by basically moving away from our galaxy. So right here, if you sort of look at the detections, you'll notice that the circles, or basically the mass of these black holes, is going to be larger and larger, with basically some of the largest detections so far being really, really far away from us. And so that by itself is also another mystery. Why is it that a lot of these larger collisions happened farther away from us and happened in much, much earlier universe? 
So you could see the biggest merger between two really, really massive black holes that created an intermediate mass black hole happened about six and a half billion years ago. And so to try to explain this, the scientists in this paper focused on something that's entirely different. They focused on the idea of the black holes as they evolve with the universe. And so in this particular study, the scientists decided to focus on the influence the universe has on everything in the universe itself, including of course black holes. And specifically on how the universe changes the things inside of it by expanding and also accelerating its expansion. So in other words, here we're talking about dark energy. And this assumption is sort of important, mostly because of the way that the black holes are usually modeled. So normally when the scientists try to model black holes, they make an assumption that the universe in this case does not affect black holes and so the universe is static. This is of course based on the Einsteinian's formula. And this in a sense simplifies a lot of the equations and makes the calculations much easier. But a lot of these models and calculations normally are only good for a certain period of time. Once the universe expands and once it sort of grows a little bit, the calculations and models are going to be a little bit off. But this type of simplification definitely works for black hole collisions when we're only talking about a few seconds before they finally collide. In other words, modeling this for LIGO or for any other interferometer works just fine and doesn't produce any problems. But in this case, we are only seeing the final moments of the collision. We're not actually seeing the beginning or even the middle part. The actual process of black holes colliding toward each other may take millions or even billions of years. And when we're talking about millions and billions of years, and when we actually talk about the expansion of the universe, in this case, some other effects become more prominent. One such effect is known as the cosmological coupling, which essentially implies that a lot of things in the universe are kind of connected and affect each other. So if the universe expands in size, a lot of things inside the universe will also change to some extent. And I guess the best example of this cosmological coupling is the light itself. We know that redshift or cosmological redshift is usually a telltale sign for us that something is really far away and is moving really fast from us. And so here, as the universe increases in size, the light slowly loses a little bit of energy. That's redshift in action. And so, for example, a distant universe producing a lot of ultraviolet light as it creates new stars is really only going to be producing uh, radio light by the time that all this light makes it to planet Earth. But in this case, the researchers made a different assumption. They made an assumption that what if black holes are also coupled to the universe? And what if the black holes over time start to gain energy? And not because they were absorbing stuff, just because the universe itself was growing in size. The scientists provide a pretty good theoretical basis for this in their paper. And to try to see what happens, the scientists modeled roughly around a million different stars that went supernova, with some of them then creating black holes with some of these black holes being in binary systems that slowly started to move closer and closer to one another. But in this case, the black holes produced by supernova were pretty much exactly the ones that we expect to be produced, not the ones we observed from LIGO. And then they essentially made an assumption that, as the universe expands, the black holes slowly grow in mass. And they wanted to see what the total mass of the final black hole is going to be, depending on the distance and depending on the time it takes black holes to collide with one another. And to their surprise, they've managed to sort of solve both mysteries. There were a lot more mergers detected, and a lot of these mergers were much more massive than the ones that were originally theorized by a lot of scientists before 2015. And interestingly, the scientists in the study did not change any other factors. Everything else in the universe was as we know it. And so just by itself, this presents a pretty interesting argument. The argument being that while well, black holes, like everything else in the universe, do not exist in a somewhat static, unchangeable universe. As the black holes move around as they orbit one another, or as they do other things, they may also change as the universe expands and as the universe changes. And so by itself, it does present a pretty interesting explanation to a lot of these unusual observations. But it still obviously does not help us explain where these collisions happen, or specifically what part of the galaxy, or what part of the universe. It also does not explain why some of the black holes seem to have such a big mass difference, like the ones you see right here. So there are definitely quite a lot of mysteries left to be solved. But by itself, this cosmological coupling idea seems to be able to present a lot of the explanations that were previously unavailable, and seems to be a really important concept that some of the future studies need to address. 
If black holes are indeed connected to the expansion of the universe, and if their mass is affected by the universe itself, this might also help us solve a lot of other mysteries and explain a lot of other observations that the scientists have been struggling to explain. And so, as the LIGO Observatory collects more data, we might be able to finally answer all of this once and for all. For now, it's a very interesting proposition, and a proposition that arises from solving some of the Einsteinian equations. This is actually something that appears in the general theory of relativity. But whether it affects black holes as presented in this paper, I guess only future studies will show. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.